Welcome to the 81st Annual Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory Symposium on Quantitative Biology. This year's topic is on targeting cancer. I am Elizabeth McKenna, an Associate Editor from Cancer Discovery, and I'm sitting here today with Dr. Eileen White from the Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Welcome. Hi, nice to be here. <laughs> so tonight you'll be speaking at the symposium about your recent research on autophagy. Uh, yeah. I think just to start, could you perhaps explain what autophagy is for the audience? Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting process where in response to starvation, cells will make vesicles that will capture components in their cytoplasm, mostly proteins and organelles, and then degrade them. And the idea is, is that this degradation of proteins and organelles provides uh, breakdown products that can be recycled into metabolic pathways. And so in that way, cells and animals can tolerate starvation for mm -hmm. s short periods of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, in your talk today, you'll be speaking about the role of autophagy in KRAS mutant cancers. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you found? So what we found is that, uh, well, just a little bit more of the history of autophagy. It's a, it's a, it's a survival pathway first identified in yeast that allow yeast to survive nitrogen starvation. And this use of autophagy to, to survive starvation is also apparent in mammals. And in fact, we made a mouse where we can systemically acutely delete an essential autophagy gene and those mice are okay in the short term, mm -hmm. but if you fast those mice, they, they, they die. Mm. So it's a, clearly autophagy is a survival pathway in yeast all the way uh, conserved to mammals. And so what we found is that, but, but, but what's interesting is that this pathway is normally on only at a very low level under normal conditions. Mm -hmm but it's massively induced when, when cells or animals are starved. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what was unusual is that when we started looking at cancer, we found that even under fed conditions, the autophagy pathway appeared to be on. Mm -hmm. And when we interfered with the function of the autophagy pathway, this diminished the growth and survival of cancer cells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that, what that meant was that autophagy was the survival pathway for normal cells, but mm -hmm. cancer cells can usurp or take advantage mm -hmm, of that pathway mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for their own survival. So in, uh, in KRS mutant cancers, is there a sp specific way that autophagy is, is promoting survival? Uh, that's a good question. So um, what I'm going to talk about tonight is, is really two things. One is what specifically is, you know, is autophagy doing? Mm -hmm. um, and does it, in fact, uh, recycle intracellular components? Mm -hmm. And if so, what metabolic pathways are supported by this recycling? Mm -hmm. And so this first step is, in cancer cells, does recycling of intracellular components occur? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we did demonstrate that by labeling, uh, labeling cancer cells all the components, mm -hmm. and then starving the cells and looking for the label to start appearing in an autophagy-dependent manner into specific metabolic pathways. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to do that, and yes, in fact, proteins and organelles are degraded by the process of autophagy, and if you delete an essential autophagy gene, that process does not occur. Mm -hmm. so, so, so cancer cells are recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, so then the second question is what are they using it for mm -hmm. and how does it promote survival and the short answer is is that they need autophagy uh, to prevent fatal nucleotide pool depletion mm -hmm. that when you starve rash driven cancers they undergo if they don't have autophagy they undergo an energy crisis and they deplete their pools of nucleotides and uh, so what what autophagy is doing is supplying substrates to maintain uh, uh, nucleotide synthesis and mm -hmm. nucleotide pools. Mm -hmm. And so does autophagy work to promote survival in the same way in, in, in different cancers with different genetic backgrounds like BRAF for example? Or that's is it a, different? Yeah, different that's a great mechanism? question and uh, I don't know that we know the answer to that. So, because we've only, these metabolic, you know, in, in interrogations of 
rash-driven cancers that were mm -hmm. wild type and knocked out for autophagy have only been done in, in rash-driven lung cancer. Mm -hmm. We have not yet done them in, in other cancers. Mm -hmm. um, but what we know is that there's probably multiple functions of autophagy mm -hmm. that are contributing to cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in BRAF-driven melanoma models, mm -hmm. Um, what autophagy is doing is pre preventing senescence. Mm. And that could really be related to a metabolic defect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. caused by the loss mm -hmm. of autophagy, but we'll have, we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. Do you suspect that it's a difference based on the genetics or based on just the nature of different tissues? Yes, that's another good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I think we, we're going to, I think the genetics is going to make a difference, mm -hmm. but I also think the tissue type may also make a difference. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. Now, so I understand from uh, other, other people in the field have found that in certain contexts, autophagy can actually be tumor suppressive. Can you comment on that? Yes, and so we, we, have, uh, we have published papers relating to that too, and the, the take-home lesson is that autophagy has a context-dependent role in cancer. Mm -hmm. In some cancers, autophagy promotes survival like it does to yeast and mammals and starvation. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, autophagy does nothing. There are cancer cells that don't care if autophagy is there or not. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, how are these cells dealing with, mm -hmm. with uh, stress if mm -hmm. they don't have autophagy? Mm -hmm. And that's an important important and future area for investigation. Mm -hmm. And yet in other models, if you knock out autophagy, especially in the liver, uh, you end up with uh, benign hepatomas. Mm -hmm. So it's clear that in mouse models, autophagy is suppressing uh, uh, the development of liver, benign liver tumors. Mm -hmm. And so, so one possibility, and I think this is generally what people are thinking, is that autophagy protects cells, mm -hmm. it promotes their survival, uh, but in tissues like the liver where chronic damage and cell death leads to chronic inflammation, mm -hmm. and chronic inflammation in the liver and pancreas and a few other tissues is a well-known carcinogen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that, that, and that is probably the mechanism where whereby autophagy is tumor suppressive mm -hmm. in some settings. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but to be clear, uh, this is occurring in mouse models and it's not clear whether this occurs in humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you tell us about some of the efforts to, to characterize this in, in humans? Or? Uh, well, what's happened uh, uh, is that you know, one key indicator of, of a role of autophagy or of anything in cancer is simply to look at the, the cancer genome. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, more than 10,000 tumors have been sequenced. Uh, we have, you know, a, in a huge amount of data on genomic alterations in a vast number of genes. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the genetic footprint of whether the these genes are involved in cancer can be seen by looking at this data. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned is that in general, the, auto the core autophagy machinery is generally not mutated in cancer. And these genes are often expressed in cancer. So what we think is that the, you know, this pathway is remarkably preserved mm -hmm. in most cancers. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, so since the theme of the symposium is targeting cancer, can you tell us about efforts to try to drug or treat or, or, or target or autophagy? Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of interest in that, and I think their uh, initial attempts uh, involve using hydroxychloroquine, which is a lysosomal tropic uh, uh, drug. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that the autophagy pathway captures the cargo and delivers it for, to the lysosome for degradation. So mm -hmm. the idea is if you in, interfere with the lysosome, you're going to block all lysosome-dependent degradation, including that that goes to the autophagy mm -hmm. pathway, um, goes through the autophagy pathway. So, so um, hydroxychloroquine is involved in clinical trials to see if, if interfering with lysosome function might have some anti-cancer activity. 
Uh, some of the early results from these clinical trials have been published and the results are mildly encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, other pharmaceutical companies are, you know, making deliberate inhibitors of specific components of mm -hmm. the autophagy pathway. Mm -hmm. So there could be something that's more specific other than just targeting the lysosome. Mm -hmm. Are there specific combination approaches that you would foresee might be, a, a, you know, a a good idea based on the, the literature? Right, so autophagy is induced in response to generally to, to stress, mm -hmm. uh, not just starvation, but pretty much any kind of stress. And there's many papers published that say that autophagy, I mean, is induced by just about any type of cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. So um, one possibility is that, uh, you know, anything that's damaging or stressful to cells mm -hmm. uh, might benefit from co combination with autophagy inhibitors. Anything that's interfering with metabolism uh, would probably be predicted to be mm -hmm. greatly uh, enhanced by inhibiting mm -hmm. autophagy because that might be, autophagy might be a rescue mechanism. Right, right, right. Uh, can you, speaking of metabolism, can you, can you talk at all about some of the, the links between uh, abnormal metabolism in, in cancer and, and autophagy? I mean, are there, are there certain um, like triggers or, or certain, or, or, or certain um, pathways that uh, are especially linked to autophagy recently? Yeah, so what we've learned is that when autophagy degrades substrates and uses them to support metabolism, the key pathway appears to be um, um, pathways involved in the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. So the substrates are delivered to the mitochondria, they're entering the TCA cycle, mm -hmm. they keep the TCA cycle going, the TCA cycle uh, maintains mitochondrial respiration mm -hmm. and also generates uh, uh, aspartate, for example, mm -hmm. as a provide carbon for nucle nucleotide synthesis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything so that we've been able to see is uh, related to autophagy providing substrates to mitochondrial metabolism mm -hmm. to maintain respiration, energy homeostasis, and to provide carbon for de novo nucleotide synthesis. Mm -hmm. Well, so the, the field of autophagy has been really hot lately, and I, I wonder, as, as one of the leaders in the field, where do you see the field going? What do you think the next big unanswered questions are? I think it would be the connection between autophagy and the immune system. Mm. Uh, what, what, many, what we have seen and many other people have also seen is that when you inactivate autophagy in cancer, you promote an, uh, uh, an immune response to those tumors. Mm. Uh, and in lung cancer, this is so dramatic that when you have autophagy deficient lung tumors, even though they're small and benign, mm -hmm. they, the inflammatory response of these tumors is so great, the mice die of pneumonia. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, the lungs, you know, so, so and it could be that what we're, you know, what's happening is you've got sick tumor cells, mm -hmm. you've got dead tumor cells, mm -hmm. and the immune system is doing what it's supposed to do, mm -hmm. go in there and clean things up. Mm -hmm. Um, but with the advances of immune therapy, uh, this presents an intriguing question mm -hmm. as to whether autophagy inhibition is going to uh, be an advantage in combination with immune checkpoint inhibition mm -hmm. or in, mm -hmm. in immune therapy where uh, T cells are activated to kill tumor mm -hmm. cells. Does autophagy play a role in the immune cells themselves? That's a good question, and I think the answer the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but the but the open question is whether you know what comes first. Mm -hmm. um, if it you know if, if if autophagy is dispensable in the short term mm -hmm. for immune cell function, mm -hmm. then that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that there'll be a lot of exciting uh, you know combinations with immunotherapy in general, and I think that. Uh, it sounds really exciting time in the field of, of autophagy. Yeah. So um, I'd like to thank you for joining me today. It was really great talking to you, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the symposium. Thank you very much. Thanks.